back of my head. Boron. This stuff we used. I did my countertops with it years ago. They're still holding up just fine. Probably 10, 12 years ago now. It's a two-part epoxy. Skin and eye irritant. May cause allergic skin reaction. May be corrosive to skin and eyes. Put on your safety glasses. You don't want this stuff in your eyes. You definitely don't want acrylic in your eyes, but this epoxy will mess you up too. Cures the thick glossy coating in about 8 hours at 70. Reaches full strength in 72 hours. Requires no polishing to um, produce a high gloss. That's why we've got it on the countertops. It's done out of marble. Marble's real soft and impossible to clean. So, by coating them with this, you can't put a hot pan on it, which is fine, because I've got a kitchen island I made that's made completely out of uh, uh, tile. But, um, other than not being able to put a hot pan on it, it is fantastic. And if it gets scratched up, which it won't, but if it does, what you literally have to do is either heat it up with a heat gun, or, you know what, we'll make this a longer video, it doesn't really matter. Skip forward if you don't want to see me fill in these containers. I want to try this out only from a sewing standpoint. So this is a hardener, this is the box. That's the rosin. Get a marker. A paint marker would probably work. There we go. Making two different colors. Hard. Pablo's paint markers. Let me tell you what, guys. These are the best paint markers on the planet. If you don't use them for other stuff, you don't know what you're missing. Where's the other one? E. And look at that, I put out too much. Right off the bat. Uh, they work by pushing down, and I shouldn't have pushed down right there. You just need to push down on it when you. Uh, going to work. The deal with epoxy, from what I've read and experienced, is that you can become allergic to it. I bought these at Walmart the other day just because they got a big wide mouth and they've got a solid nozzle on here. Probably will need to put, print, a, print a couple of caps for them just to keep the, the crud out of the epoxy. Keep the smell down, but we're going to see how this works. Experimentation. Gotta love it. But uh, you can get allergic to the epoxy. And the fumes. Are bad for you too. Let's get some fresh air flowing. The hardener, it's the fumes from the hardener that, uh, that are the worst. So, let's see how well this works. I'm going to put about half of it in here. This is clean, so it's not that big of a deal, but no reason to up more than we need right off the bat. Okay, that's the hardener. And we'll give it a test. You know, while this works for dispensing this stuff. It'd be nice if I can get it down to so many pumps. But since this pumps soap, oh, look at that. No mess, no fuss. In this case, we're pouring a bunch, 
So it probably would make more sense just to pour it from the container, but spilling that big container would be no fun. Okay, so it handles the rosin. I'm going to use these red solo cups because they've got the lines in it. The lines don't mean anything other than we want to make sure that we have equal amounts. That's it. It's a two ounce cup, but it's a wives' tale that those lines correspond to anything. At least that's what the Red Solo Cup people say. Boy, that is convenient. And far easier than messing with squeeze bottles. And to be really accurate when it comes to popping this stuff out. Very nice. So that's our hardener. I'm going to look at this base and see if I can. You know, it's formed down there, isn't it? It would be nice if this nozzle went over that piece. But I'll take a look at that later. There's the epoxy side. This stuff will be a little thicker. But... Since it does have the consistency of hand soap, I figure that soap containers would be perfect for and I'll I'll put a link to that in the description. I picked that up at Michael's and I forget the price. It's either sixty or ninety bucks for a gallon. Which may seem like a lot, but yep, works fine. Yeah, I think I want a cap on there to keep the the uh, any crud out. You know, just make a cap for the end of these. I'll print that. Looks like it's only a. About five millimeters. Five point one two five. That's just a guess. I'm going to pump this up to the same line that I've got. Let's take a look at another pump of this. Holy cow, that's convenient. Well, that was a successful experiment. Let's mix these guys. Pot time is probably pretty quick with this. Working time is probably only in the 30 minute range. Where's my high tech stir stick? There it is. So, when we mix it, I'm going to mix it for at least three minutes. Alexa, set a timer for. Three minutes. Now the same thing I do whenever I mix epoxy, I talk about other things, let's say like uh, the Hawthorne group, Peace River formation in the Hawthorne group, Miocene, full of Miocene fossils, shark's teeth. Turtle parts, giant sloth teeth. You can go, there's a link below to Fossil Guy, and the Fossil Guy pretty much covers the Miocene. Miocene with his fossil descriptions. You can see all the different fossils that come from that era. There's the other place. I think they find a lot of big stuff up in, uh, in Georgia and the Carolinas and all the way up the coast. But the Hawthorne group came from and the Peace River Formation came from a time when Florida was underwater. So it created a whole bunch of limestone beds. South America moved. Pangea is breaking up which pushed Ocala basically up into the air. And after Ocala got tossed in the air, oh, this doesn't smell as bad as the George Green stone. Once Ocala got pushed up in the air, everything from the apple, there are shallow seas all around Florida. 
the sea levels rose and fall based on the glaciers. And then everything from the Appalachians, basically like the Mississippi River Delta, but it wound up in Florida. It was laid down, and then, of course, sea levels receded, and we've got today's current climate and current uh, geology. Now, I'm no geologist. This is all just from uh, reading about it. We live in the most wonderful time that has ever existed in human history. If you have a question about a thing, whatever that is, you've got a magic box in your pocket that can give you the answer to just about any question you ever wanted. Or, what most people use it for, <laughs> is arguing politics and, and <laughs> watching CAD videos. Not that there's anything wrong with CAD videos. That's the whole reason we created the Internet, was to make CAD videos. That's the only reason.